um, drug price equalization account and how how this account is being maintained okay. so um, if the man uh, I, I was telling there is a fixed price for um, the bulk drug and formulation formula, formulated drug and we expect of the formulated drug to be little expensive than the bulk drug because there's a processing involved and so but if uh, the manufacturer of bulk drug uh, sometimes purchases the bulk drug at the price cheaper than those allowed in the formulation formulation so if, if it happens and then if the, he have to the, um, the manufacturer have to pay the profit uh, into this account okay drug price equalization account every manufacturer importer uh, or distributor of the bulk drug or formulation internet itself should give uh, the price list to the dealers not only to the dealers also to the state uh, drug controller and government in form 5 so uh, there are many forms uh, if you remember we have seen in the ppt so, um, so form 5 is used for this purpose so either he or she is manufacturer, importer, or distributor of bulk drug or formulation formulation drug, we have to furnish the detail about the price list to in the form five um, to the dealer to the state drug controller um, within um, one month of the uh, introduction of annual finance bill in the parliament. Okay. then retail price should be displaced on the uh, label of container in uh, indelible ink with word retail price not to exceed um, so this is what is called mrp okay and uh, before that local taxes extra whatever local taxes extra uh, that also has to be written with this um, indelible ink along with retail price not to exceed so regarding selling of formulation okay how to like there are some provision of selling a formulation. We are not talking about bulk drug, we are talking about formulation, okay? So I hope you remember what is formulation. So no person should sell any bulk drug or even any formulation to any consumer at a price more than the price is specified in the current price list or price indicated on the label of the container or pack thereof. So whatever is mentioned in the label of container on the pack, no person are eligible to sell more than that, okay? Um, so um, there are two that, that you can uh, they can consider two costs. Okay, one is um, the price uh, specified in the current price list. Okay, current, there is a price list for all the drugs, and another is price on the container. So whichever is less, plus local taxes if it applies. So uh, no person is eligible to sell any drug formulation to any consumer at a price exceeding this uh, exceeding this. Um, container price and the price list okay uh, similarly no manufacturer or distributor shall sell uh, uh, no no manufacturer or distributors uh, shall withhold from sell or refusal to sell to a dealer any drug without good and sufficient reason okay so no manufacturer or distributor distributor shall withhold from sell or refuse uh, to sell to a dealer any drug without good reason and sufficient reason if they have reason, then only they can uh, do it. No dealer shall withhold from sell or refuse to sell any drug available with him to a customer wanting to purchase a drug. So if you want to purchase a drug, they, they cannot refuse to sell the drug, okay? They have to. No dealer shall sell loose quantity of any formulation at a price which exceeds the pro rata price of the formulation plus 5% thereof. What does this mean is, you know, when you buy something in bulk, um, the price uh, of each piece uh, in that bulk will be lesser than, than buying uh, one one thing separately in a loose quantity, isn't it? So uh, here what it is uh, being told is regarding selling is, if, um, if they are selling in a loose quantity, selling in loose quantity, this, um, um, though they are selling in loose quantity, the price will be equally divided on each of the individual um, individual drugs and plus five percent um, extra. Okay, so um, so they should not the um, price of this loose one should not exceed that. Okay, because many times when they sell, uh, you know that many um, shopkeeper if they sell loose quantity, they uh, they make more profit. Okay, but here it is uh, being told that okay, you have to um, pro rata price means. Um, uh, Dividing the price equally on each um, on each um, 
on each individual truck based on the what cost you pay for entire bulk okay so that is product of price no manufacturer importer distributor or wholesaler shall sell a formulation to a retailer unless otherwise permitted under this order at a price higher than the retail price minus 16 percent thereof in case of scheduled drug what does this mean is like uh, if any manufacturer importer or distributor or wholesaler is selling any formulation to whom to a retailer if uh, they are selling any uh, formulation to a retailer the price should be uh, the price should be uh, the price should be retail price minus 16 <clears> percent <throat> okay if, if it is a, a scheduled drug so they should not charge more than this to the any of the retailer okay <clears throat> so then regarding records so like um, uh, we have seen the maintaining the record so uh, this is done in the form six okay every manufacturer and importer uh, have to maintain the records regarding how much they sold how uh, whatever turned over happened in the last six months um, and this have to be submitted to the government in the form six every company engaged in the production processing or manufacturing of bulk drugs have to maintain the record um, as stipulated in the there is a there is a separate rule a cost accounting record rule 1974 so as uh, uh, however uh, um, they have mentioned in this uh, rule 1974 cost accounting record rule 1974 in the, in the same way they have to uh, they have to maintain the record okay? about uh, how much they processed how much they produced how much they uh, manufactured uh, regarding such and seizure that we have as we have seen in um, uh, the responsibility of drug, drug control drug controller um, or drug inspector i'm sorry drug inspector so uh, any officer whoever is gazetted in central government or state government they have the authority to um, go enter search any place seize any material um, then um, all those things okay if whatever whoever is gazetted in the central government gazet uh, any officer can go so uh, offenses and penalty this will be applied as per the essential commodities act 1955 clear okay next, next month okay this is what uh, one last thing i wanted to tell you uh, uh, is effective even now if, uh, there are many things that is effective uh, about um, and mostly this is what we many uh, times is being followed national uh, pharmaceutical pricing authority so we'll see what it is exactly as we saw here if you remember in the beginning we told one of the salient feature of DPCO is to establish MPPA at the earliest, 1995. Did you, uh, did you see? Did you see? Did you remember? Okay, so I will show you what is that MPPA. This is very important body. Hello. Can you hear me still? Hello. 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 Can you guys hear me? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay, and there was a power cut again. So I was telling you uh, the, about NPPA. Can you see, see my screen? Yes, sir. yes sir. So this is National Pharmaceutical Pricing Authority and this is again under the new drug policy 1994. Okay. If you see our syllabus cha uh, chapter name here, uh, there is National Drug Policy. Okay, right. So here uh, this this uh, next chapter is going to come for this drug policy empowerment. So all these things we'll discuss here. So, but uh, for the time being, you need to know that uh, this NPPA is under the new drug policy 1994. Uh, and this central government has constituted um, an autonomous body. Uh, so, this NPPA is autonomous body, uh, constituted by central government. They started functioning uh, in from September 1st, 1997. And um, the government has appointed chairman, secretary, and other of all, all other officials for NPPA. 
and all the files and paper relating to this um, drug industry, um, which was handled previously by Bureau of Industrial Cost and Pricing um, uh, under the grant. Actually, what the, um, all the files and paper uh, was being hand, uh, was under the Ministry of Chemicals and Fertilizers, actually. So under the Ministry of Chemicals and Fertilizers, uh, there was Bureau of Industrial Cost and Pricing. So this body was um, uh, handling all these uh, files and paper relating to uh, drug, relating to the paper, uh, relating to papers, whatever related to the drug industry. Okay, but after this um, uh, NPPL got uh, formed, uh, these all things shifted from Ministry of Chemical Fertilizers to NPPA. Okay, so with the form, uh, so that means now uh, the. Hello. 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 Yeah, uh, people are having there is internet issue. Hello. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can you see yes, me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, this is just the last uh, topic in this chapter. Okay, <clears throat> just bear with me. So I was telling. Um, so um, this formation of NPPA made it uh, easier to. Can you hear me if, uh, clearly? Or the voice is breaking. Hello. Can you all hear me clearly? Ah, yes, sir. It is through chittering actually. That is why it's happening like this. Oh, the power got off, and then I lost my Wi-Fi. What happened? Okay, am I clear now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I placed my phone over the window. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, this NPPA, um, um, after the formation of this NPPA, um, the things became a lot easier about the cost because initially it was Ministry of Chemical and Fertilizers that we are um, looking at all, all the um, all the things about the even cost and about the pharmaceutical. So with the formation and NPPA, the entire price fixes an exercise like got shifted to the um, NPPA from the Department of Chemical and Fertilizers. And this uh, brought um, greater degree of objectivity, transparency and uh, speed um, in the fixing of price or all the matter about uh, pricing in the trucks. So what does this do? We will we'll see some of the specific function this implement and enforce the uh, provision of all the DPCO that we uh, that we read um, in the beginning of this chapter some of the provision okay so this helps in implement and enforcement of all the provision of DPCO and it helps in monitoring the uh, drugs availability of the drugs if there is any shortage it, it helps to identify and uh, it uh, and what steps what uh, what solutions would be there for and those sorties or the availability problem. So NPPA look after that. It also helps in fixing or revising the prices of bulk drugs and formulation from time to time. It uh, helps in monitoring the prices of drugs that is available in the country so that um, it, uh, the, the, the prices is controlled if it doesn't exceed um, as per the individual or as per, any, as per the monopoly of any, any manufacturer. Um, it uh, helps to recover the dues uh, that is um, collected under the DPCO and, they, and, and gets, that gets deposited into DPEA account, that is drug price equalization account. It helps to advise the central government for any change or revision in drug policy. Okay? And it also helps in assistance to the central government on parliament matter uh, to any drug price. So these are general function of NPPA. Um, the, basically, it helps in uh, it helps to enforce, as we saw in the summary, the summary of function of NPPA. It helps to um, enforce the DPCO, uh, in implement the DPCO, and help the government in fixing the, all the matter of uh, drug price. So this is what uh, all about drug price control order uh, that is given in our syllabus. If you have any queries, uh, you can ask.